Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Let's talk a little bit of uh, thanks, uh, brand colors. You know, we know things are changing today. Yeah, if you look into commercial market now, so print volume is going down. You know, so a lot of printers are moving into with digitals coming in. So newspaper have been changing to digitals. So everybody is on Facebook today. So what are we going to do to our industries? Yeah. So look into it. You know, I believe that you know, packaging still survive today. Yeah. So those commercial offset printers are moving to packaging as well. I believe. So this is the right move to move because this will be sustainable. Yeah. So today I would like to share a little bit of how you manage this brand color. As you know that we as a printers here. So if you look into these slides, we are always on the end part of it. Yeah. So when we talk about the end part. So the anything wrong on the front end, you are the last part to get blamed. Is that true? Yeah. So this is the problem that we are facing day to days, and we have argument with customers about the colors and how to manage all this. Yeah. So today I would like to share these slides with you here. So, how to manage this brand color? So I believe that if you guys going to supermarkets, you know all this brand, and this has been taking care. By five or ten of this、uh, FMPG company in this part of the world, yeah. So, so you'll be surprising to see some small brand here belong to a big company, and sometimes, in fact, they are competi、uh, competition between their own brands, and it's the same company, yeah. So, how they how they communicate color over, and are we ready for all this, right? So, we know that、uh, we have been doing four color commercial jobs, and now you have to move into a spot color. Uh, 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 control and how we manage this, okay? So a little bit flashback, we touch a little bit of、uh, TC 130. You know, industry has been talking about ISO 12647, and this has been the standard has been talking for years. Yeah, so this year is coming to about 10 years on talking about standard offset color controls. Yeah, some of you have done that, and some of you have the same requirements about this、uh, color co quality control on offsets, and you see. In 2013, few years back ago, they actually make a changes again. Yeah, so they start adding OBA into it as part of、uh, measurements because we know that our paper pulps coming in. So in order to get a whiter paper, so you actually put some agent into it. But by doing this, the color going to be different. Yeah, because you see in you know, a different lighting, so you change. And from the OBA during 2004, they have only five paper type category to work on. And now they are moving to eight paper types, you know, to be a category. So, and this is not easy, you know, to follow a standard from a four grad thirty nine, those days that we have. And now you are changing to fifty one, fifty two, which is coming up soon. So they have a lot of numbers of these standards. I believe in different country like Japan, you have your own Japan color standards. But in this part of the world, we always have been followed. Either you follow the American, or you follow the Europe. So it depends on who is your customer. So if your customer there's no standard, also very difficult to deal with.、So、really, yeah. This is the biggest problem that we are having. So it depends on how good your sales negotiation power with the customer. But this will not last. End up is still pricing, yeah. So now we have to think about how to manage this color correct. Okay. So in brand colors, the brand owner always want to communicate this color across, but there's no technology to do this today, yeah. So but ah,、uh, a Standards is coming up, so I just want to give you a little bit flashback on the workflow on offset. Next, please. So these slides has been live for some times. You know, I believe you guys is always in this workflow. Yeah. So if you see it on the front end, so we have soft proofing. You know, people are doing soft proofing, retouchings on the monitor. So you deal with people like artists on the front end, and then once this is okay, you will send this file from RGB to CMYK to do a conversion. Once the conversion done, so You will, you will create a PDF file, and you send it for proof. And today, with the technology you have, you actually even think have a choice to go to digital, which is、uh, digital press, or go back to the conventional press. Okay, so this is all some of the ISO which is important to your to our industry. Okay, so if you see this, this was founded in 2003. Yeah, so TC 130 came out with the standards. They categorize only five paper types. You know, since this is back then, you know, ten years ago, if you, if we are in the industry, do we know what is paper type one, paper type two? 
So paper type one, we always talk about art paper. So there's two types of art paper, gloss art and matte, uh, matte art. So this is under categorized under paper type one. But in today, they are changing all this again. Next. So they are changing to eight paper types. Are we able to catch up all this? Yeah. So so people were asking me, Yan, you know, my four graph thirty nine. I also haven't do it. But now there is four graph fifty one or fifty two. Yeah. So when we talk about standard, I know in reality this is a very nice uh, TC one thirty that uh, you know print expert trying to create a standard. But commercial printing are going down. What are we going to do? Yeah. Next, please. In today, things are changing. So the only way for us to communicate across brand color is going through the back way, which is spectral data. You know, spectral data is only the data being captured as a colors, and now we can encapsulate this data into a PDF itself. So I think this will be a good thing for a designer to communicate across. So the next time, you know, put it in the other way around to think about it. When you create a PDF file, this PDF file contains a spot color. Huh? For example, you have a CMYK file plus two spot color if you're doing a packaging job. And inside here, they just show you Pantone 021. For example, you have your orange color and also a reflex blue. But these two P this PDF itself, just put a plate name. And you're actually ordering an ink to put on it to print. But do you know this is the correct color by just using a Pantone ink? Let's say Pantone 021. And if you're talking to three suppliers in your production environment, when getting the same 021, you're not getting the same colors. So it's whose fault? So you start comparing about price, you start comparing about colors. But end of the day, you have no information to communicate through. Yeah? So technology like this, this is what the breakthrough is. Yeah? So it's called ISO 17972. So CFX technology, which is uh, contain the spectral data that keep into your PDF. So this PDF file will capture this spectral data go across the whole supply chain. By going through the supply chain, if you are doing proofing, you can extract the data to do the proof correctly. If you are doing printing, you can extract this data, send it to your ink maker to produce this ink. Yeah. Next, please. Why this has been a standard? The next version of PDF, PDF 2.0. Yeah, at the moment, what we have is Acrobat 10, Acrobat 11, which is 1.8. 1.9, 1.8 at the moment. So in 2.0, PDF 2.0, this information must be inside, yeah, as a spot color, not just a name that you say I have a Pantone information, right? Okay. So this will fall into ISO 32000. Okay. Next, please. So let's have a consideration today. Yeah. So in the supermarket today, when you get into a supermarket, you have been exposed like 17,000 product in 30 minutes of shoppings. Yeah? Out of this, 60% just force buying. You know, just think that this is nice, I just pick it up. Without you need it or not, you know. Especially with the ladies, yeah. So I go with my wife, you know, end up just start buying a lot of things. Yeah? So 80% of the purchasing decision has been made by the stores. Yeah? So you don't know what to buy, but you go to the supermarket, you think about it. Oh, this is nice, maybe I should have it. You get it. So what is the what is the scenario behind this? It's about brand colors. Yeah? So it takes about 2.6 second decision just to buy a product. But out of a survey, we also find that, you know, a scenario that if you are going to a supermarket, if you start buying a shampoo, this shampoo too doesn't look the same. What are you going to do? Slightly different color and, and psychology will start thinking if this color is much so vibrant, then oh, this could be a fake product or this could be an old product. But in reality, it could be probably on the same production. Yeah? But who going to manage this? Yeah? So then, this is where problems come in. This is where colors come in. Yeah? So if you see that sample one, there is 1.66 of uh, color variance will make things change. Yeah? So you will see things differently. And because of the tolerance, yeah? so you are not printing the same anymore. So Procter & Gamble always have the books they're saying 2.5 is always the color variance you know in offset commercial we always talk about 5 delta e 6 delta e and even we go down to a very layman yeah this is very close you know 85 percent close which is okay but your client says 65 
then we are gone. Yeah, so your ink maker will tell you 95 because he sells you the ink. Right? So this is reality. So we have to work with data. So the data on color is always delta E. So remember that this is the only information to understand how big the difference of colors. Now, we have to move across the color from a color, from, from whatever the design have created the color to move across the print, print uh, supply chain. Who is managing all this? Nobody. So is the printer doing it? Printer never received job. Who is doing this? Doing this? Is it the job of a designer? The designer, I'm doing my job on the screen. I don't care about how it prints. So is it a color set job? And in fact, color set business are changing now. So there's no middle band. Who is retouching all these colors? So this is the impact of industry. So it becomes nobody want to care about colors. We just print whatever we can as long as it works. It works. But what if it doesn't work? So if you see this, technology has been there. Printers on flexo printers, if you talk about packaging, Flexo printer, gravier printer has been using this for long. And we are in commercial printing now. You know? I think 95% here are always commercial offset printers here. Yeah, so think about it. If you want to go into packaging industry or some of you have gone in, how you manage this color? Right. So people tell me that they have ink kitchens. You know, recently that I go to one of the uh, printing company, they say I have ink kitchens in their office. Yeah? So in the production run. So this is how the ink kitchen looks like. They mix their ink themselves. Yeah? So it depends on the mode of the guy, how they mix it. So do they measure it? No, by layman. If this work works, everything is okay, client is happy. If his client is not happy, we have to try again. Right? So technology like this, how we do through, how we go, go to measure all this, especially if we talk about packaging. So brand owner is actually creating a standard. There is always a gradation to print on. And when you start printing on packaging, you are expecting color like transparent ink, you know, because you have a different substrate. You are not lo no longer just printing on paper white. So this is going to be very challenging. So you might print on silver substrate, you might print on a transparent films, and, and how you manage this color, and how, no how much information you know if this ink is opaque or this ink is transparent. So if you look at back behind this, there is a technology to do this, okay. You can do this yourself to understand how the color work. So you have to obviously you have to print the gradations to understand from a step wage from zero to hundred percent. But also there is a background of black color on top. So you print these two colors on top of each other. So if you print on paper white, you will get the gradation of the color. So you are able to pick the information of every gradations of these spot colors. Yeah? But why there is a black background here? The black background is to understand how transparent the ink is. You know, some ink is transparent at 30%, then all the way, maybe at 50%, it becomes opaque. So that is where the background is actually to do a measurement. Okay. So this is how we encapsulate the data on the PDF. Think about it, PDF X with CFX technology. So these are the information you'll build in. So this will allow designer to communicate color much more easy. So if you see this, you know, the whole idea behind it we want to keep this spectral data of every patches of the color so that this information is much more easy for you to communicate to your ink supplier to understand it. Yeah. So there's other information like you know, tone value increase, you know, the whole spectral curve for each color, how it responds. So this allows ink maker mixing your ink much more easier. And the other part of it, which is very important, we talk about tone value increase because you need to know the dot gain of the spot color. So this was not being taught. Yeah, so if you look into the back into the Bible, you have this Pantone book. It's always show you 100%. How it looks like if it's a 50%. Nobody tell you. Yeah? So this is the TVI curve, which is I find this is very important of, you know, from 1% to 99%, you need to read this information. You know, print is about gradations. Next. Okay. So if you see the supply chain, I think this is very good workflow for you to understand how you should communicate color and where you should start if you are a printer receiving a job from a client. So ink formulation, you should talk to your ink maker how to get this color right. And this is always had to come from the brand owner. So the only way brand owner is measuring this data, keep this data as a CFX data, 
and you have the way to open up these PDF files to have all these information. So this is the next way that PDF will contain all the spot color information inside as a spectral data to move across. So how this works? So the brand owner will have the colors information in their creations, right? So this library has been captured inside as a brand color. You know, PNG itself, they have like 2,000 spot color themselves. They will use these colors of their own. Yeah, so they will not buy Pantone ABs uh, 123 to print this because they prevent imitations. So an uh, ink company always develop a special inks for them, right? So with special tolerance. And of course, the designer are able to use it in design, not going through a guide colors. You know, you're not taking out a Pantone color from swatches. And some of you have these swatches for years. You're probably keeping it for the last 10 years. And you're still taking out to compare. We might not be right anymore, you know. Okay, and, and, and proofing and also print supplier are able to use these information. So, and, and for press side, these are the most important part. Look up some keywords like TVI, tone level increase, opacity, ink sequence. When you print different sequence, you know, overlap each color, it might show you differently. So this is very important. So, you, and also talk to the ink formulation guy, talk to your ink supplier about all this information, how to process the ink, you know, with the spectral data. Thank you very much.